Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to this evening worship service. You're very welcome as you join with us as we uh, sing God's praise, sing praise to God, as we seek the Lord in prayer, as we read his word and have his word proclaimed. And uh, we're going to begin this evening uh, by singing praise from Psalm number 48, Psalm number 48, Psalm which assures us that God is with his people, with his church, not only in the present, but also for all eternity, that he is the constant guide of his people. Psalm number 48, we join together in singing praise to God. Let's now come to our God in prayer. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you that we can come to praise you at any time of day, first thing in the morning, in the middle of a busy day, or a last thing at night, or even in the middle of the night, that you, O Lord, are always there for your people. Your ears are always open to their cries. We thank you, Lord, we can come to worship and praise you in any place as well. Ideally, Lord, in the Lord's day, we'd want to be gathering to praise you in uh, public worship in a church building. But even, Lord, that we cannot do that in those days, in these days. We thank you, Lord, we can worship you in our own homes. You can be worshipped anywhere, O Lord. We thank you we can call upon you in any place. We think of those today, O Lord, who may be in hospital or in nursing homes or feeling very isolated. We pray that they might have a sense of your presence near to them. They might be assured that you are the Lord who is watching over them. So Lord God, we commit now this worship service to you and pray that you will help us by your Holy Spirit to exalt you, to exalt the name of our glorious Saviour in praise here this evening. It is in Jesus' name we pray and for his sake. Amen. Two readings now this evening. First of all, uh, we're going to read from we're going to read from Psalm 102, Psalm 102, turn to that passage in God's Word, uh, not reading all of the psalm, but the concluding uh, few verses, we pick up the reading at verse 18, and uh, conclude at the end of the psalm. We'll be singing the psalm later on in the worship service to conclude our worship service, for it's a psalm that emphasizes the unchangeableness of our Lord. Psalm 102, verse 18. Let this be written for a future generation, that a people not yet created may praise the Lord. The Lord took down from his sanctuary on high, from heaven he viewed the earth, to hear the groans of the prisoners, and release those condemned to death. So the name of the Lord will be declared in Zion, and his praise in Jerusalem, when the peoples and the kingdoms assemble to worship the Lord. In the course of my life, he broke my strength, he cut short my days. So I said, do not take me away, O my God, in the midst of my days. Your years go on through all generations. 
In the beginning, you laid the foundations of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you remain. They will all wear out like a garment. Like clothing, you will change them, and they will be discarded. But you remain the same, and your years will never end. The children of your servants will live in your presence. Their descendants will be established before you. And now turning to the main passage that we'll be thinking of this evening, as we have it in the book of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews 13, beginning uh, the reading at verse 7, reading down as far as verse 16. Let's again hear the word of God. Remember your leaders who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Do not be carried away by all kinds of strange teachings. It is good for our hearts to be strengthened by grace, not by ceremonial foods, which are of no value to those who eat them. We have an altar from which those who minister at the tabernacle have no right to eat. The high priest carries the blood of animals into the most holy place as a sin offering, but the bodies are burned outside the camp. And so Jesus also suffered outside the city gate to make the people holy through his own blood. Let us then go to him outside the camp, bearing the disgrace he bore. For here we do not have an enduring city, but we are looking for the city that is to come. Through Jesus, therefore, let us continue to offer to God a sacrifice of praise, the fruit of lips that confess his name. And do not forget to do good and to share with others, for with such, for with such sacrifices, God is pleased. Uh, drawing the reading to a close then in verse 16, and our main text this evening, our main verse, is a well-known verse, this very well-known verse in Hebrews 13, and verse 8, we read these words, Jesus Christ the same yesterday and today and forever. Well-known words, perhaps you've memorized them as a child, perhaps you have them up on a poster or a card in your house somewhere. These are very well-known words. And what they tell us, they tell us about our unchanging Saviour. That's the theme of our meditation from God's Word this evening. I want to direct your thoughts to our unchanging Saviour. Everything changes, everything moves, everything revolves, everything flies away. These were the rueful words penned by Frida Kahlo, the Mexican painter or artist, to express her attitude to changes that were affecting her. She found thoughts of change very troubling and therefore she wrote that everything changes and everything flies away. And what changing times we are currently living in, aren't we? What an upheaval to our way of life, not only in this land, but across the whole earth. Think of what change has happened uh, in our social lives. Social distancing, almost a new term, I think. Social distancing must now be practiced. We can't even shake hands with our friends and neighbours. And think of what changes happened to our leisure activities. No big football games to entertain us. I haven't the enjoyment of watching Everton at the moment. How I'm missing out. And no access to the gym for those who enjoy such places. Think of what changes happened to our travelling. Foreign holidays are completely out of the question. And even, even a weekend in another, another part of our island is not possible as yet anyway. Think of what change has happened in our, in our children's lives. Going to school is not an option now for most of them. And homeschooling is much more on the agenda. Think of what change has uh, happened to our working lives. Many offices and shops and factories and restaurants, they're closed. And many people have lost their jobs. And think even of, of what change 
has happened to our church lives and our church activities. We can't meet together now and worship in our church buildings. It's not possible. We must rely upon technology to minister and to avail of the Word of God. In these and in many other ways, have we all experienced massive change in our lives over the past few months? All has changed, changed utterly. And you see, such sudden and massive change can be very disconcerting. It can be very troubling. Perhaps some of you listening this evening are struggling to deal with all of this. Perhaps you're, you're perplexed and feeling insecure. Perhaps you do need to be reminded, despite all of that change going, around, going on around you, despite all that upheaval that you're having to deal with, that as a believer, if you're a believer this evening, that as a believer, you do have an unchanging Saviour, an unchanging Saviour, in whom you can trust and upon whom, upon whom you can rely day by day. And hence, these well-known words here in Hebrews 13 and verse 8, they should have great meaning for us, and they should bring reassurance to you, words which direct, direct you to Jesus Christ, the one who is the same yesterday and today and forever. Even if everything else changes, he does not change. Now, one might think at first glance that this statement about our unchanging Saviour appears almost out of the blue in this 13th chapter of Hebrews. But not so. Not so. This 8th verse, if you look closely, is in fact a connecting link between what precedes and what follows, between what goes before and what follows after. On the one hand, it's linked to the call in verse 7 for believers to remember their former leaders and to imitate their way of life. You see, these inspiring leaders have now passed away. But the Lord Jesus not only abides forever, but he remains the same. And here's a timely reminder to us that while we can and should look for inspiration to pastors and to elders, who have led us faithfully in the past, our ultimate dependence must be upon the one who remains with us in the present and who will always be with us and be there for us in the days that lie ahead. At the moment, uh, a history of this congregation of Limavadi is being prepared. And when it's published, I'm confident, and uh, as an historian, I can be appreciated why I'm confident, I'm confident that the account of faithful pastors and elders of past generations will inspire us as we seek to serve the Lord here in these days. For instance, when it's published, you will read about how joyfully the Reverend James Kennedy responded to the spiritual revival in this locality in the 1850s. The, 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 the delight that he took in seeing people in good number, great numbers repent of their sin and believe in the Saviour. That will inspire you, hope, to look for days of revival to come this way once again in our day and generation. You shouldn't forget about the Reverend Kennedy or the many others who will be mentioned in the book. You can be inspired by them. But, but, unlike your unchanging Saviour, they are no longer with us. It is to him that you must look primarily for help and grace to meet the challenges of today and to fulfill the duties of tomorrow. It's to him that you can continue to look amidst the changing scenes of time. Change and decay in all around we see, but we can be assured that the one who does not change will abide with us. So verse 8 is linked to the preceding verse, but it's also connected to the following verse, to verse 9, which you'll see contains a warning against being carried away by all kinds of strange teachings. The Hebrew believers of the first century, to which this letter was first addressed, are being urged 
not to waver from their loyalty to the gospel of Jesus Christ, not to allow any novel teachings opposed to the doctrines which they had been taught to find a place in their thoughts. Now, on the one hand, of course, we must not allow ourselves to be imprisoned by tradition or by empty ecclesiastical traditions. And that's a constant danger we need to be aware of. But on the other hand, we must not allow ourselves to become mesmerized by the latest theological fads. The world in which we live is a world where people are always now chasing novelties. A world characterized by what has been termed a postmodern obsession with novelty. A postmodern obsession. Obsession with novelty. This could be seen, for example, in the widespread assumption that the newest version of something, whether it be the newest phone or the newest car, that the newest version of something is assumed is always the best. That's always better than what came before. And that's a far from a sound, that's far from being a sound assumption, believe you me. They don't make things like we used to, as is often said. We live in a world where false teachers are constantly appearing, claiming that they have new insights and new revelations. So how timely a warning this is. Not to be led astray by subtle falsehoods. Not to be led astray by that which claims to be the next big and exciting thing which we should follow. We're reminded here that Jesus Christ is God's last unchangeable message to his people. A message which never needs to be superseded or supplemented. The Christ who is proclaimed for us in the pages of the New Testament is the Christ you need to keep believing in. He's the Christ you need to keep on believing in, in him. Don't allow yourself to be carried away by some novel and seemingly exciting teaching about him that may appear on the horizon. Rather, hold fast once for all to the faith delivered to the saints. Hold fast to the Saviour who is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So I hope you can see how verse 8, this affirmation about our unchanging Saviour, how verse 8 relates to the surrounding verses of Hebrews chapter 13. That no matter how much inspiration you can obtain from great leaders in the past, your primary focus must always be upon the one who remains the same. And no matter how exciting new teaching may appear to be, and no matter how many may be jumping onto that bandwagon, you must have nothing to do with it. You must continue to adhere to the unchanging truths about your unchanging Saviour. Well, that's quite a long introduction. But let's now think about five ways in which the Lord Jesus is the same yesterday and today and forever. Five ways in which he is unchanging. Five ways, though they're by no means a complete account of his, what's called his immutability. It's just a fancier term for his unchangeableness. Five ways that are definitely of great relevance to us in these days of major change and upheaval. And the first one is this. Here's the first one. Jesus Christ is unchanging in his person. Jesus Christ is unchanging in his person. And this is, of course, an aspect of his deity or his divinity. Something which sets him uh, far, uh, far above ordinary men and women. For we change so easily and so often. We do often change. And quite often, it's not for the better. But you see, the Lord Jesus is the unchanging Son of God. A truth which is in fact highlighted at the very beginning of the book of Hebrews. Turn some time to the opening chapter where the inspired writer is making the point that Jesus is the eternal Son of God. And he's far superior therefore to angels which are created beings. 
And listen to how this is put in verses 10 and 12 of that opening chapter, where we read, In the beginning, O Lord, you laid the foundations of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you remain. They will all wear out like a garment. You will roll them up, rope up like a robe. Like a garment they will be changed, but you remain the same. But you remain the same. This is in fact a quotation from Psalm 102. A psalm which will be singing at the end of the worship service. And you can see how that psalm is telling us that whereas even the heavens and the earth, which, which do appear so stable, that even the heavens and the earth, they will be changed. But in contrast to them, Jesus, the Lord, remains the same. His years will never end. How good it is to know, dear friends, how good it is to know that the one in whom you have placed your trust is unchanging in his person. Even when everything else changes and even when everything else disappears, he remains the same. So in the midst of our ever-changing and uncertain world, won't you keep on looking to the one who is unchanging in his person, the eternal Son of God, who will never leave you and who will never forsake you. So our Lord Jesus is unchanging in his person. And now secondly, he is unchanging in his purpose. He is unchanging in his purpose. From all eternity, God's word tells us, there has been given to the Lord Jesus by God the Father a chosen people to be saved and redeemed by him. And the very purpose for which he came into the world was to save his people from their sins and thereby bring glory to his heavenly Father. And in the Gospel of John in chapter 6, if you turn to it sometime, the Gospel of John in chapter 6, these great words of promise and assurance were proclaimed by Jesus. He said, All that the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me I will never drive away. And then our Lord added these further words of promise. And this is the will of the one who sent me, that I shall lose none of all that he has given me, but raise them up at the last day. And so in these days, and in the days to come, how expectant we can be that the unchanging Saviour will keep on calling sinners unto himself via his word, and via the working of his spirit. You see, unlike us, who can be so easily distracted and deflected. So things we should be doing don't get done. Unlike us, Jesus will never be deflected from his gracious purpose of saving all those who have been given unto him. And let's never think that there's no hope for the church. Despite how cynical and resistant our modern world might be, we can be assured that Jesus will continue to build his church, for that's his aim, that's his unchanging purpose. He will continue to build his church and the gates of hell will not be able to prevail against it. He will not fail in his purpose of saving all who turn to him in repentance and faith. His unchanging purpose should spur you on to pray more expectantly and to witness more eagerly. Pray more expectantly and witness more eagerly in the light of the unchanging purpose of the Lord Jesus Christ to save a people for himself. Now let's move on to the next point. For not only is Jesus unchanging in his person and unchanging in his purpose, in the third place let's be assured that he's unchanging in his power. He's unchanging in his power. He's still mighty to save. And he will remain mighty to save until that day as he been appointed for his glorious return to judge the living and the dead. Despite all the changes and upheavals in our world, Jesus still reigns as king. And no one can thwart his almighty will or overthrow his unshakable kingdom. Once more, 
how this stands in contrast to our experience as mortal human beings. How quickly our powers fade. How subject we are to decline and to decay. Even the most powerful of earthly rulers lose their power and their authority. But not so the one who is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He continues to have and will continue to have all authority in heaven and on earth until all his enemies have been put under his feet. Day by day then, and year by year then, we can keep on being strong in him and in his mighty power. Dear friend, if you're feeling spiritually weak and vulnerable in these days, you can turn this day and the following day and all the days thereafter, you can turn to him. To the one who is unchanging in his power. For he does remain the same yesterday, today and forever. It was Robert Murray McShane who put it so well when he wrote of Christ. The sea ebbs and flows but the rock remains unmoved. Yes the sea is unstable, change all around us but the rock of our salvation he remains unmoved, unchanging in his power. And the one who is unchanging in his person, in his purpose and in his power, is in the fourth place the one who is unchanging in his sympathy. Unchanging in his sympathy. The book of Hebrews keeps on pointing us to Jesus as the great high priest, whoever lives to make intercession for his people. And it speaks of him as the one who can sympathize with us in our weaknesses. In that he has been tempted in every way, just as we are. He never sinned, but he was tempted in every way, just as we are. Remember how during his earthly ministry, and yet and yesterday, if you like, he spoke such words of comfort and support to his struggling disciples. Such famous words as these in the Gospel of John, chapter 14, Verse 27, peace I give you, my peace I give you. I do not give as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. And the one who now intercedes for us is still the God man. He can therefore identify with your struggles in the midst of your present trials and temptations. Perhaps you are now missing someone, a dear friend or a Christian leader, who used to draw alongside you to sympathise with you in your weaknesses. And that is a loss that is keenly felt by you. You are understandably missing that listening ear and that arm that you used to lean on. However, even if you are deprived of your most cherished friends, be assured of this. There is in heaven for you, dear believer, an unchanging sympathizer to whom you can always turn, to whom you can turn even with sighs and tears. And one day, and one day, he will bring you to be with him and he will wipe away every tear from your eyes. So four things we've already seen about our unchanging saviour. He's unchanging in his person. He's unchanging in his purpose. He's unchanging in his power. He's unchanging in his sympathy. Now, fifthly and finally, behold in Jesus the one who is unchanging in his grace. Unchanging in his grace. Yes, unchanging in his gracious dealings with faithful, fickle, unworthy servants such as we are. Do you know how the book of Hebrews draws to a close? Do you know what the very last verse of this chapter in Hebrews is all about? Well, hear it now. Here's what it says. It says simply this. Grace be with you all. Grace be with you all. And of course, the book of Hebrews is by no means the only book that ends on such a note. Listen also to the closing words of the book of Galatians. 
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit, brothers. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. More examples could be given, but perhaps the most striking one of all is that well-known benediction or blessing that's found at the end of 2 Corinthians. At the end of 2 Corinthians, it speaks there not only of the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, but also prays that they might experience the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now you often hear those words pronounced, don't you? At the close of a worship service, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. But I wonder, I wonder, do you fully appreciate how beautiful and reassuring they really are? What comfort and assurance they should impart to you when you hear them being pronounced. Those words that we hear so often can sometimes be taken for granted by us. But that shouldn't be allowed to happen. Or how amazing, how the amazing, how amazing the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ still is. That grace which saved you is there to sustain you and to keep you. As the famous song puts it, through many dangers, toils and snares, we have already come. T'was grace that kept us safe thus far, and grace will lead us home. Yes, today and tomorrow and the days to come, dear believer, you can. Yes, you can. You can be confident that the unchanging grace of your unchanging Saviour will sustain you. You can be assured that whatever may be going on in this big, bad, puzzling world, that you can always approach the throne of grace with confidence, that you may receive mercy and find grace to help you in your time of need. The grace of the Lord Jesus is not something that is confined to yesterday or to today. His grace is lasts forever. His grace will bring you through many toils and stairs and his grace will lead you home. So in conclusion, dear friends, how thankful you should be for such a saviour. Neither the coronavirus nor anything else in all creation can ever undermine his gracious love for you. So keep on looking to the Lord Jesus in trust and expectation. For Jesus is the same today as he was 2,000 years ago. He is the same in his person. He is the same in his purpose. He is the same in his power. He is the same in his sympathy. He is the same in his amazing grace. The same, in fact, in every way. For as God's word assures us afresh this day, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Hallelujah. Praise his name. Amen. And now we conclude our worship service as we sing words of praise from Psalm 102, speaking to us of our Lord, who remains the same. Let's join together in singing praise to the Lord.
and let us pray. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all this day and forevermore. Amen.